So this video talks about how to set up or establish a revocable living trust brokerage account. Hey everybody, Paul Rabelais here, estate planning attorney, helping people all around Louisiana, kind of get their legal affairs in order, then make sure things go smooth when they pass away. And was talking to a gentleman today, he had several different brokerage accounts and he was interested in making the transfer of those easier at his death to his you know, survivors. And so, you know, not uncommon, many people um, when facing the ine inevitability of their death, many people set up trust to ease that transit transition of the assets. Many people set up those revocable living trusts because assets in a revocable living trust don't have to go through the court supervised succession or probate procedure when you die and so your survivors don't have to hire lawyers like me just to gain access to brokerage account access. So real common, people uh, create trust, they put their investments in their trust and then they name a successor trustee to um, have access when they die and disperse it out to the beneficiaries. Okay. So what I did to define the process of creating a revocable living trust brokerage account was I dug in a little bit and I took a look at, at three financial institutions at their specific instructions on how to establish a trust account for a revocable living trust. And so I picked three institutions that were kind of do-it-yourself type financial institutions. If you have a financial advisor at the financial institution, your financial advisor will get all the paperwork together and, and we'll walk you through the process. So the three that I picked, all good companies, Charles Schwab, Vanguard, Ally Bank, let's take a look at those, their instructions on setting up a trust account. So first one I'll take a look at is Charles Schwab. And so I have right here their instructions to open or update a Schwab One trust account. So, you know, that's what that uh, form looks like. And then I highlighted the part that talks about for revocable trusts. So it says, um, Charles Schwab in their instructions says, for a revocable trust, attach a copy of the title page or first page and all signature pages of the trust documentation along with this application. All pages of the certification of trust, memorandum of trust, affidavit of trust, or abstract of trust may be submitted to satisfy the trust documentation. So what Schwab is saying is, and, and really what every company says is, don't send in the entire trust. I think the reason they say that, some lawyers get really, really long with their trust instruments, dozens if not hundreds of pages. The financial institutions don't want to sort through all that. They just say, send us what we need. So they want either the title page or first page, which title page is usually the first page, and they want all signature pages, which is usually the pages in the back, and that's all they need. Now, instead of sending that, you can send in one of these, what's called certification of trust, memorandum, memorandum of trust, affidavit of trust, or abstract of trust. In Louisiana, we call it an extract of trust. It's just a summary, usually one or two pages, which states the name of the trust, who the trustees are, and that often gets recorded in the real estate record so title examiners can um, know who has the authority to act on behalf of the trust. So Schwab says you can send in that summary or extract instead of the title page and the signature pages. So pretty simple there. Um, in the trust account application, um, there's a place for you to check off that it's a revocable trust, but uh, piece of cake. Next one we'll look at Vanguard, another good company. And I have a copy of their you know, application for trusts. And then again, I highlighted the, what they need from, uh, from, for revocable living trust to set up accounts. So again, you gotta have that trust in place, all signed before you open the trust account. And it says you must attach copies of the pages of the trust agreement and any other relevant documents such as an appointment agreement that contain the trust name and date, the current trustees names, and the signatures of the persons who were required to sign the agreement under state law. So real common, they want the trust name and date, they want you know trust pages that show that, trustees, um, and signatures. So uh, real common as well. So you'd have to you know pull out those specific trust uh, pages that have that trust information, send that in. Okay, um, then 
last one I looked at was Ally Bank, and really this is not a brokerage account, um, but you know a lot of people have CDs at Ally Bank, and they don't want those CDs to be frozen when they die, so they want to uh, make it a trust account. And so real similar here, and I'm looking at their website because so much of what they do is electronic. And it says, we've made setting up an account in the, in the name of a trust as simple as possible. You can easily apply online and we'll have you upload pages from the trust agreement along the way to complete the application. And then it says, we'll need copies of, and it lists five bullets. First one, the pages describing the trust, including the formal name of the trust, grantors and trustees. Like everybody else, they wanna know what's the name of the trust so that they can title the account correctly and they wanna know who's setting up the trust and who the trustees of the trust are. Then it asks for the notarized signature page with grantor and trustee signatures. In some states, there may be a separate page completed by the notary, so they want that. Any amendments to the original trust, they wanna know if the trust has been amended and pages with trustee powers and provisions related to incapacity or death of a trustee. Now the other companies didn't ask for that, but Ally is. And then the last thing they're asking for is a page listing the beneficiaries who will receive the funds if the grantor of the trust passes away. So on the front end, Ally Bank wants the trust provisions that says what happens when the grantor or settlor dies, who's in charge, who gets the money, um, Vanguard and Schwab don't ask for that on the front end. They'll ask for it on the back end when the person dies, but Ally Bank is asking for some uh, information as to what happens you know, on the back end when somebody dies. Uh, Ally wants that documentation. So there you have it. You have to take a look at what the financial institution requires. I'll also tell you that it seems like when people are getting this stuff in order, they're getting their legal affairs in order, they're arranging things to really simplify the transition when they die. We often see people also wanting to simplify things by consolidating brokerage accounts or investments that may be at multiple financial institutions and really scaling that down to maybe one or two institutions. So someone may come in with seven or eight different individual brokerage accounts at seven or eight different financial institutions just because that's what they did over the years while they were busy and accumulating and opening accounts and saving. And then they wind up with maybe one or two trust accounts and all those different um, investments um, transferred into the one or two trust accounts to make it easier for 1099 tax reporting at the end of the year, to make it easier for the settlement of the estate, only you know the trustees and the beneficiaries only having to deal with one or two financial institutions instead of seven or eight. So we see you know that those two things being accomplished uh, to really simplify things. One, moving things into a trust account, avoids having to go through the probate and then do and then two consolidating from multiple accounts into fewer accounts to ease the uh, the things that have to be done when somebody passes away so hope that helps make sure you take care of this stuff you know leave a legacy for your family if you're in Louisiana and want to get this stuff straight you can give our office a call 866-491-3884 and uh, you know we can start a conversation about um, you know what what your estate planning program might look like. I'm Paul Rabelais. Have a great day.